upgrade to the most high. So tonight, as we all know, is Parable Friday. Friday night is Parable night. We're going to be going over the parables of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The things that he said, the things that he taught the disciples when we walked the earth. So tonight, we're going over chapter 3, the parables of wisdom. Okay? We're going to be going over the Lord's vineyard. The Lord's vineyard. Okay? The Lord's vineyard. That's the nice topic. Let's open up with the book of John. Let's get there. John 8, verse 32. Let's get there. John 8, chapter. Okay? Let's read that. John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So tonight, we're going to learn the truth that Christ taught us, that when we know it, we shall be free. We shall be free this day. Okay? Let's open up with the book of Hosea. Give me Hosea 12, verse 10. Hosea 12, and verse 10. Let's read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and used similitude mm. by the ministry of the prophets. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he spoke by the prophets. When he spoke by the prophets, he used similitudes and visions, you understand, by the ministry of the prophets. So sometimes he make it plain to us. Sometimes he doesn't make it plain to us when he speaks to us, you understand? So we need to be in God's commandments to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. To understand the things that are written in this book. Okay? Give me the book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 10. Matthew 13 and verse 10. Let's read that. The book of Matthew chapter 13. Come on. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why do you speak unto the people in parables? Go ahead. He answered and said, and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. He says, because the reason why he spoke to the people, the multitude that followed him that did not believe, the reason why he spoke to them in parables is because why? It was not given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but it was given to the true followers of Christ. Those that believe on him, those that kept his commandments, those that are still keeping the commandments in the regeneration. Okay, go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. Okay, hold that. Give me Mark 4 verse 10. Mark the fourth chapter and the 10th verse. Let's get there. Mark chapter 4 Mark. and verse 10. Read that. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 10. And when he was alone. Oh, start verse 9. Start. Hold on, start at verse 9. Read verse 9, Mark 4, verse 9. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 9. He said unto them, what? He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He that hath ears to hear, let him understand. Go ahead. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. You see that? He says, they that were about him with the twelve, meaning with the twelve disciples. So those that were about him was the multitude that followed him outside of the twelve. He says, those that were about him with the twelve, ask him a parable. They wanted to understand what the parable meant. Go ahead. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Read. But unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. See what he's saying? He says, unto you, disciple, unto you, the twelve, you understand, those that believe on me, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them that are without, but to them that are without this truth, them that don't believe this truth, he says what? All these things are done in parables. Why? Go ahead. Come on. That see, they may see, and not perceive. You see that? Is a seeing they may see, but not perceive. They're gonna they're not gonna know what they're looking at, meaning they're gonna have their eyes wide shut. Their eyes are open, but they don't understand what they are seeing. They cannot perceive what they are seeing. Go ahead. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Mm -hmm. 
They're going to hear what is being said, but they're not going to understand what's being said. Go ahead. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins mm -hmm. should be forgiven them. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. You see what he's saying? It says, Lest at any time they should be converted, because why? For them to be converted, they must be taught the laws. That means they must receive the laws. They might, when they receive the laws, they must acknowledge their offenses. When they acknowledge their offenses, they're going to repent, they're going to get their minds right, and the Lord will forgive them of their sins. So what is Christ saying? Christ is quoting Isaiah. Hold this. Give me Isaiah 6 and 9. Let's understand what he's really saying. You understand? Read that. Isaiah 6 and 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 9. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. It says what? And tell these, says, tell these people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. He says, go and teach the people, but I want them to hear, but I don't want them to understand what you're saying. Go ahead. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. He says, they're going to see you, but they're not going to perceive what's going on. Go ahead. Like today, as we go to the streets, we, they, the Lord is sending us to our people to teach them. But for the most part, the majority of our people, they are not good. They're going to hear, but they're not going to understand. They're going to see, but they're not going to perceive. He's going to tell you why. Go ahead. Make the heart of this people fat. What he's saying is, is make the heart of these people fat. Meaning what? Make them, make their heart to be like an adamant stone. Make their heart to be fat, to be difficult. Why? So that they don't understand what's being said. Go ahead. And make their ears heavy. And make their ears heavy. Meaning what? They must be dull of hearing. They must not understand what's being said. Go ahead. And shut their eyes. Mm -hmm. Shut their eyes. They will see, but they will not perceive. Come on. Lest they see with their eyes. Mm -hmm. And hear with their ears. Go ahead. And understand with their hearts. And convert. Mm -hmm. And be healed. The Lord says, I don't want that right now. I don't want that thing to take place. I want to punish them first. You understand? He says, they're going to see you, but they're not going to perceive. They're going to hear you, but they're not going to understand. Because if they should hear and understand, they're going to convert. They're going to repent. They're going to get their minds right. I will forgive them, and I will give them healing. The Lord says, not right now. I don't want that. Not yet. Why? Because the Lord is still want to bring that belt. You understand why? Because as a nation, we're rebellious. Get that in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9. The book of Isaiah, the 30, verse 9. Mom? That this is a rebellious people. That's why. Because we're rebellious as a nation. Come on. Lying children. We love to lie. Come on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the laws of God. Everything else we hear it, we understand it. But when it comes to God's commandments, we hear, but we don't understand. So we can repent and be healed. Go ahead. Which say to the seers. Say to the see seers. The seers is the prophets that go to the stage to be heard and be understood what the Lord be saying. Go ahead. See not. Mm -hmm. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. You see that? They say to the prophets, he says, don't tell us what we're doing wrong. Meaning, see not. Meaning, just pretend you don't see the sin we're in. That's what he's saying. Prophets are not unto us right things. Don't give us God's commandments. You understand? Meaning what? We can hear everything else, but don't teach us the law. That's why a lot of the times our people, you teach them nationality. You teach them the curses of Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, Joel 3, and all that. You show them what's happening. You understand? Then you show them who they are in the Bible. You understand? The minute you go into the laws of God, they want to fight you. That's what we read in here. See not. They want to hear everything else. Nationality. The curses of Deuteronomy 8, 28. The white man is the devil. All of this. But the minute you read the laws of God, you teach about marriage. You teach the black man to get his act together. You teach the black man, the black woman to get her act together, to come together in the scriptures, to get married, to raise children, to build a nation. That's where they will fight you. Why? Because you are teaching them to change now. To stop doing evil and to do good. They don't want that. Go ahead. 
and to the prophet, prophesy not unto us right things. Oui. Speak unto us smooth things. You know thing? Speak unto us smooth things. Tell us what we want to hear. Don't you dare mention the sin we're in. Go ahead. Prophesy deceits. Tell us lies. That's why the, the Christian church is packed. Why? Because the prophets, they don't prophesy. They don't see not. The, 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 the congregants, they are like the puppet masters. They are the ones that dictate what the pastors bring out. The pastors cannot go outside of what they think and go into the Bible and teach that say the Lord. When he does that, they're going to change on him. That's what happened to G.D. Jakes. You understand? When he grew, when he grew a small ball and he started, he started talking about that the women are now becoming men. When the black women turned against him, he stopped. He's no longer pushing that. He went back to what? To women thou art loose again. That's what, that's, that's the house of Israel right there. You understand? Go ahead, verse 11. Read. Get you out of the way. Get out, get out of the way. Meaning what? Listen, we don't want to see you. We don't want to hear you. We want to hear you as long as you don't tell us what we're doing wrong. Go ahead. Turn aside out of the path. If you turn aside out of the, our path. We don't want to see you. Step out the way. Read. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. That's who they have a problem with. They have a problem with the Holy One of Israel. They don't have a problem with Caesar Borges. They don't have a problem with Buddha. They don't have a problem with Krishna. They don't have a problem with that black rock in Mecca called Allah. Most importantly, they don't have a problem with white Jesus. That's why here they say, what? Read that part again. Tell now what? Cause the what? Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. That cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So they are letting you know who they don't want to hear from. The Lord is telling us through Isaiah, says, my people don't want to hear from me. That's what he's saying through Isaiah. They want to hear about everybody else. That's why people join politics. They want to hear what Malema has to say. They want to hear what Ramaphosa has to say. They want to hear what Mango Suti has to say. But they don't want to hear nothing the most I got to say. That's the issue our people have. They don't have a problem with Caesar Borgia, that white image of Jesus. They have a problem with the Holy One of Israel. That's the issue. That's why he said what he said. Go back to Mark. Okay? Go back to Mark chapter 4. Read verse 12. Read 11 and 12 together. Okay? Come on. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Mm. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. Go ahead. That seeing they may see and not perceive. Come on. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Mm. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. You see what that, and their sins be forgiven them. So this part right there when it says, lest at any time they should be converted. Hold that. Get that in X319. Lest at any time they should be converted. Okay. Read that in Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Go ahead. Repent ye. Uh, repent ye therefore and be converted. Mm -hmm. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, Repent ye therefore and be converted. So when you repent, the benefit of repentance is that you're going to be changed. And when you are changed, meaning converted, your sins get to be blotted out. Get that in Psalms 19, verse 7. Let's see what converts us. So we understand the ben we need to see the benefits of repentance here. Read that. Psalms 19, verse 7. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Mm. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Mm. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. See that the laws of God is what changes us. The laws of God is what changes the way we think. You understand? It teaches us to do what? To, re to forget everything that we've learned. That's what the law of God teaches. That's why in 2 Nessus 14, get that? 2 Nessus 14, verse 34. It so be that you will subdue your own understanding. Let's get there. 2 Nessus, chapter 14, verse 34. 
Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding Come on. and reform your hearts, mm -hmm. ye shall be kept alive. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. You see that? It says we must subdue our own understanding and reform our hearts. We must get what? We must let go of everything we've learned in, in this society, which is nothing but garbage, and change our thinking and be converted. That's what he's saying right there. So go back to Acts 3, verse 19. One more again. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So when you repent, you get changed. What changes you? The laws of God which will make you wise. That your sins may be blotted out, meaning may be wiped away. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The time of refreshing, guess what? Is when the Lord returns. We come out of captivity. That will be the time of refreshing. But before the time of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord, we must repent and be converted that our sins may be blotted out. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. So the Lord is saying, no, I don't want that. I don't want them to repent and convert that yes, their sins may be blotted out. I don't want that. Because when they repent and use the laws of God to change, then I'm going to have to forgive them, which means they're going to get healed. The Lord says, I don't want that. Because they are saying, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So that's what they have a problem with. The Apostle Paul had to explain the same thing. Get that in 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay. He had to explain the same thing because that's the same thing. That, the, that's the same mindset our people have. They had it back then. They had it today. Get that in um, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 8. Read that. First book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 8. Huh? He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God. He, that, he therefore that despises, they despise what? Meaning they hate God's commandments. Is that they don't despise the man that is bringing the laws of God to them, but they despising God that sent that man to teach them. That's what he's saying. Come on. Who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. He's given us his Holy Spirit to teach our people to repent and be converted. You understand that their sins may be blotted out. So the Apostle Paul explained the same thing that Isaiah is explaining, the same thing that Christ is explaining. You understand? They were all moving in the same spirit. Okay? Now watch this. Now let's get to Mark 12. Get Mark 12, verse 1. Mark chapter 12, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 1. Mark. And he began to speak unto them by parables. You know? He began to speak unto them by parables. Why? Because it was not given to them that are without to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they hear, they will hear, but they're not going to understand. They will see, they will not perceive. Why? Because they want to cause the Holy One of Israel to turn from before them. They don't want to hear what the Most High got to say. You understand? Through the prophets. Read again, verse 1. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 1. Mark. And he began to speak unto them by parables. Mm -hmm. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and did a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. So now this is some heavy stuff right here. Hold this. Let's go to Matthew. Okay, Matthew 21. We coming back here. Because guess what? The Gospels, certain, the same parable, some, somewhere they are explained easier to understand. Here in Mark, is not being explained easier to understand. Watch this. Get that in Matthew 21. Read verse 33. Watch this. The book of Matthew 21, verse 33. Come on. Hear another parable. Mm. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about. Mark. And beat a wine press in it mm. and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. You see that? That's a lot easier to understand. There was a certain householder. Who's the householder? That's Christ. 
which planted the vineyard and hedged it round about, and dig the wine press in it and build a tower and let it out to the husbandman. Husbandman goes into husbandry, which is farming. Husbandman is the farmers and went into a far country. So go back, Mark 12, read verse one again. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse one. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and mm. did the place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. So now let's understand what is this vine, what is this vineyard that was planted? Because the husbandman, the certain man, Christ is talking about himself here. Okay, Christ is talking about himself. That is him talking here. Okay, so let's see who is the vineyard. Okay, Christ is the man that's speaking. Let's who is the vineyard. Get that in Isaiah 5, verse 7. Let's get there. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 7. Go ahead. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Read again. For the what? For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Sorry. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Keep going. And the man of Judah is pleasant plant. Mm -hmm. And he looked for judgment. But behold, oppression. Come on. For righteousness, but behold, a crime. Let me stop right there. Now, we know what who the vineyard The vineyard is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts, the man that went into a far country, the householder, guess what? That's the house of Israel. That's the vineyard. So go back to Mark 12. Read verse 1 one more again. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 1. Mm. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it. Stop right there. So the vineyard is the house of Israel. This man is Christ that planted the house of Israel. Because why? The house of Israel, we belong to him. Okay? He planted this vineyard. Hmm. Hold on a second. Give me the book of Genesis 1. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1. Read verse 26. Book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Go ahead. And God said, Let us make man in our image hmm. after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when he says, Let us make man in our image, this is talking about that's the most high Christ, angels, and spirits, okay? So it says, let us make man in our image. So after they did that, what did they do? As after our image and after our likeness, he will look exactly like us. Go ahead, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he him. Because the male and female that he created... They were after the first man that was created's likeness. And that first man was after the most like God's likeness. That's Adam. You understand? God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. That's Adam. Male and female created he, them. Okay? So he used the, the man, the main man, which is Adam. You understand? So right now when it says, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Yeah, that's, going, that's what he's going into here. He's talking about the sons of God, which came out of Adam and everybody else that was created. But the sons of God, that's talking about the house of Israel. That's how he planted that vineyard. You understand? As from the beginning in the spiritual and then also in the physical realm where we at now on earth. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go too deep into that. Let's go back to the parable. Go back to Mark 12, read verse 1 again. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 1. Okay. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it. Stop right there. Let's deal with the hedge. And he set an hedge about this vineyard. The hedge is a hedge of protection around the vineyard. The vineyard we know is the house of Israel. Give me the book of Job. Okay, give me Job 1, verse 8. Watch this. 
Job chapter 1 and verse 8. The book of Job chapter 1 verse 8. Come on. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Well, Job, Job our forefather, was a servant of the Lord who did what? Who kept God's commandments. Go ahead. That there is none like him in the earth. Mm. A perfect and an upright man. Go ahead. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. So now the Lord is giving us the characteristics of our forefather Job. It says there's none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. Meaning he hates evil. Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? He does not fear you for nothing. Why? Come on. Has not thou made an hedge about him? Has not thou done what? Has not thou made an hedge about him? You see what he's saying? Did you, make, did you not make an hedge about him? An hedge about him? Remember, Job represents the house of Israel. Okay? That's for another time, for another class. But just keep that in mind. Write this down. Job, our forefather, represents the house of Israel. Okay, go ahead. Read that again. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 10. Oh. Has not thou made an hedge about him? Mm -hmm. And about his house? You see that the hedge is, a, did you not make an hedge about Job and about his house? So the hedge goes, it says, the hedge about him. The hedge about him. What is the hedge that was made about him? Him. Jump up to verse 1. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. He was what? And that man was perfect and upright. And that man was perfect and upright. That man was perfect and upright. So let's get that in Psalms 19, verse 7. What made him perfect and upright? Read that. Psalms 19, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God. The, the laws of God, they are perfect. God's commandments, they are perfect. They doing what? Converting the soul. Converting the soul. They convert the soul. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see that our forefather Job was wise. Go ahead. Verse 8. The statutes of the Lord are right. True. Rejoicing the heart. You see that the statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Why was our forefather Job perfect and upright? The statutes of the Lord made him upright. And they rejoiced his heart. Go ahead. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Hmm. Enlightening the eyes. Light in the eyes. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is clean. Mm. Enduring forever. The fear of the Lord is clean. Meaning it's, it's what? It's plain. Doing what? Enduring forever. Go ahead. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. You see that thing? They are righteous and they're, it says what? They are true and righteous altogether. All praises to the Most High. Let's go back. Go back to now to Job chapter 1 verse 1. One more again. The book of Job chapter 1 verse 1. What? There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. Mm. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and escheweth evil. You see that thing? The one that, he, the one that feared God and escheweth evil. So guess what? The, the what made Job to be perfect and upright was God's commandments. That means our forefather Job, he kept God's laws. And because he kept God's laws, that's why he had a hedge about him. He had a hedge about him. What was the hedge about him? The laws of God. You understand? The opposite of that, get that in Sarah 36. I'm going to show you when there's no hedge. Sarah 36, verse 25. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Where? where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. See that thing? Where there's no hedge, the possession gets spoiled. 
So the first hedge that was about our forefather Job was God's law. That means the Lord was with our forefather Job, who represents Israel. You understand? Where no, where no hedge is, the position gets spoiled. Spoiled with what? Philosophies. Spoiled with what? Lusts. Spoiled with what? Sin. You understand? Just to make it plain. Okay, let's go back. Job chapter 1. Now read verse 10. One more again. The book of Job chapter 1 verse 10. Has not thou made an edge about him and about his house? You see that? So now, not only did he, the hedge was the laws of God around him, he kept God's commandments and about his house. And it says, and about his house. So the Lord, he what? He gave him a place to stay. That means what? He blessed the work of his hands. He was able to what? To get a job. You, you understand? To get wealth and to take care of himself and his family. That's what it says. And about his house. That's the next protection. So the first thing that comes is the laws, the laws of God. Then everything else follows after that. Okay, go ahead. And about all that he has on every side. His possessions now. You understand? Go ahead. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. That means whatever he does, it prospers. You understand? That's why he had wealth and all that. Go ahead. And his substance is increased in the land. He was wealthy also because the Lord was the hedge about him. Well, what was the hedge about him that the Lord the Lord that that the Lord put upon him? His commandments. That was the hedge. And when no hedge is, the position gets spoiled. You understand? So that's what is going into the get that in Judith 5 verse 17. Here's another one. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 17. Go ahead. And whilst they sin not before their God, they prospered. You see that? While we sin not before our God, we prospered as a nation. Why? Because there was a, the Lord was a hedge about us, right? Because the God that hated iniquity was with him. Because the Lord that hates sin was with us. Because what? We eschewed evil, right? But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, where no hedge is, which is the Lord, go ahead. They were destroyed in many battles very soon. He became spoiled. The nation spoiled us, right? And we led captives into a land that was not theirs. That's why now we are in South Africa calling ourselves South Africans and Songas and Thales. Go ahead. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground. 70 AD, go ahead. And their cities were taken by the, the enemies. You see that 70 AD, that's in these last days. You understand? Titus and Vespasian. Rick? But now are they returned to their God mm -hmm. and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is Rick? and are seated in the hill country for it was desolate. Okay, all praise to the Most High. That's it on that. I just wanted that part. You understand? Verse 17 and verse 18. So now, Let's go back. Let's go back to um, let's go back to Mark chapter 12. Read verse 1. One more again. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 1. Okay. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it. The hedge that he said about it is what? The commandments. He gave us the commandments, he taught us again. He made the laws of God honorable. Get that in Isaiah. Let's get the prophecy. Isaiah 42, 21. Watch this. Isaiah 42, verse 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 21. Okay. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. You see that the only thing that pleases the Lord is his righteousness. Go ahead. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see that when Christ walked the earth, he magnified the law and made it honorable. He made the laws of God honorable. Let's get some examples. Get that in um, get that in um, Matthew 5. Get Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Let's get some examples. Okay. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. What? Ye have heard that it was said by them of all time. Mm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. See that? He's quoting Moses. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Come on. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to last after her 
have committed adultery with her already in his heart. You know what he's saying? But whosoever looketh on a woman to last, you looking and you lasting, you thinking about what she would be like in the bedroom. That's where Christ says, that's where the problem is. Looking is not the problem. Looking and lasting, that's where the problem is. Because when you last, now it is entered into your mind. You start to think what? Sexual, evil, demonic stuff. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, go ahead. Whosoever looketh on a woman to do what? That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's how Christ, that's how he made, magnified the law and made it honorable. He took it to a whole new level. You understand? It's pertaining to our conscience, to our minds, the things we think on a daily basis. You understand? So yeah, that's how he did it. He magnified the law and made it honorable. So go back to Mark now, chapter 12, verse 1. One more again. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 1. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it. You see that? He set a hedge about it. That hedge is the commandments that he gave unto us. He magnified the law and made it honorable when he walked among us. Go ahead. And dig a place for the wine flat. Mm -hmm. And built a tower. Stop right there. He says he dig the place for the wine flat and build a tower. Hold this. Give me Isaiah 5 and 2. We're coming back. Isaiah 5 and verse 2. Let's read that. Part of verse 1. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1. Mm. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved Touching his vineyard. See that? He says, I'm going to sing to my well-beloved. Hold that. Baruch 336. We're coming back. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Go ahead. He has found out all the way of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. And to Israel, his beloved. Go back, Isaiah 5 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. His vineyard. You see that the well-beloved is Israel. Okay, the vineyard is Israel. Come on. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. That fruitful hill is the land of Israel, the land of Jerusalem. Come on. And he fenced it. Mm, he and, did he what? Out. and he fenced it. He fenced it. He put a hedge about it. Go ahead. And gathered out the stones thereof. Now he's thinning it up. Okay, go ahead. And planted it with the choicest vine. He planted it with the choicest vine. That choicest vine is the spirit of Christ. The laws of God. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in uh, John 15. Let's get there. John, he planted it with the choicest vine. John chapter 15. Let's read verse... Uh, John 15 verse 5. Read that. Well, John chapter 15 verse 5. Mm. I am the vine. I am the what? Are the branches. I am the vine. The Christ says, he is the vine. Go ahead. Ye are the branches. The branches, come on. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. You see what he's saying? He says, he's the vine with the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Okay, hold this, watch this. Hmm. Let's go to... Um, Let's go to, hold on a second. Yeah, give me that in First John 3, 24. Watch this. What does it mean when it says um, in John, go, go, read, read, read John 15, verse 5 again, so we understand what's being said here. The book of John chapter 15, verse 5. Mom? I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, hold on. the same... 
Wait, wait, wait. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branch. This is Christ speaking. I'm the vine, ye the branches. Hold this. Give me that in um, Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah chapter 11. Let's get the definition of the branches, who the branches are. Okay. Jeremiah 11 verse 16. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 16. Mm -hmm. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fed of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Broken. The branches of it are broken. The branches of the vine are broken. Up. Go ahead. He's going to tell you who the branches are. Come on. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee has pronounced okay. evil against thee. He says, For the what? For the Lord of hosts that planted for, thee. Well, for the Lord of hosts that planted thee. Christ is the Lord of hosts. The Lord, the host, meaning he's the God of armies, who the armies is on. He says, for the Lord of hosts had planted thee. We are the vineyard that the Lord planted. You understand? Understand that. So we're reading the same thing. It's just being said in different ways. Go ahead. Have pronounced evil against thee. Mm -hmm. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the, the house of, of Judah. The evil of the house of Israel does one branch. Come on. And the house of Judah. And of the house of Judah, that's another branch. Come on. Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense and to pay out. Now we know who the branches are. Christ is the vine. So go back to John 15 verse 5. The book of John chapter 15 verse 5. Okay. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. So the branches is the house of Israel, the house of Judah. All twelve. Come on. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. See that it says, he that abideth in me. If we abide in Christ, and he abides in us, we're going to bring forth much fruit. For we cannot do anything without him. Get that in 1 John now, 3 verse 24. That's some heavy stuff right there. 1 John 3 verse 24. 1st book of John chapter 3 verse 24. Come on. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. You see that and thing? He... Hold on. He that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. We dwell in Christ if we keep his commandments. Read. And he in him. And Christ will dwell in us because we keep his commandments. Read. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given us. You see that thing? So when if Christ is abiding in us, it means we're keeping his commandments. If we are abiding in Christ, it means we're keeping his commandments. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Now, let's go back. Go back to Isaiah now. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5. Read verse 2 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 is 2. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and really? planted it with the choicest vine. The choicest vine, remember, that Christ is the vine. We the branches of this vine. Come on. And built a tower in the midst of it. And, also and built a tower in the midst. Hold on. And build, build a tower in the midst of this vineyard. The tower of righteousness. That's the tower. Go ahead. And also made a wine press therein. That wine press. Remember, the wine press is for the what? The vine dressers that are going to work on the vine press. Read. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth wild grapes. Well, that goes into something else, but it's still going into Israel. But the point is. What we're reading here, what Isaiah is saying, is the same thing that we just read in Mark 12. So go back to Mark chapter 12, read verse 1, one more again. Now from there, from there, we, now we understand. When he says, it says what? He dig a place for the wine fed and build a tower. So when he says he gathered the stones out, you understand? And he, what? he planted the vineyard 
you gather the stones out and you build the tower in the midst of it. So let's deal with that. You understand? Hmm, do I want to go there? Yes, I want to go there. So when he says he digged a place for the wine fed, I want to deal with that just for a second. Give me the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. You understand? Give, no, give me Matthew 7, 24. Then we'll get his Ephesians in a second. Matthew 7, verse 24. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth this saying of mine, and do it then, mm. I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. See that? He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he says he's going to liken him to a wise man. Because what makes us wise? God's laws makes us wise, according to Psalms 19 verse 7. Okay? Which built his house upon a rock. Okay? Watch this. Go ahead. And the rain descended. Hmm. And the floods came. These are trials now. The rain, the floods, the trials and tribulation. Go ahead. And the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it mm. fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon a rock. Because why? When, what is this talking about? That's the foundation. Because when you dig to build a tower, you're building a foundation. So guess what? This house, when it, they, he, hedged up, he, hedged, he put a hedge round about it, he digged the foundation. Guess what? He digged it to build a tower. He was putting a foundation. Who's the foundation? Christ is the foundation. Get that in Ephesians 2 verse 19. Ephesians 2 verse 19. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Go ahead. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God. Move over. The household of God is the house of Israel. When he says you are no more strangers and foreigners, he's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. See that? The foundation. That's why it was digged. The foundation of the apostles and prophets. Come on. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I think being, he being the chief cornerstone. That's why he had to gather out the other stones out. You understand why? Because those stones went into what the scribes and Pharisees and the Sadducees. There were the stones that was useless. So now he had to build the proper foundation, which is himself. You understand? He, that's why he digged it. Okay? That's what he's going into that right day. He digged the thing, and he was the foundation. Get that in Matthew 16. Because he says the same thing to the Apostle Peter. Okay, Matthew chapter 16. Read verse... Matthew chapter 16. Read verse 18. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, mm -hmm. and upon this rock I will build my church. See that? Upon this rock I will build my church. Who's the rock? Himself. Christ. Read. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail, meaning what? Captivity. Who are, who are the keepers of the gates of hell? The nations, Esau and the people that support him, the other nations, you understand? They are the keepers of the house of hell. They will not prevail against the church that he will build. Who is going to be the foundation, you understand? That's what he's saying right there, okay? Now, let's understand. Let's deal with the tower that now, the tower, that had to be built upon that foundation. Get that in 2 Samuel 22, verse 3. 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 3. He is fortifying this house. This tower is the tower of righteousness that must be built, okay? Who Christ is the foundation. Second book of Samuel, chapter 22, verse 3. Go ahead. The God of my rock. Mm -hmm. In you him, know what? Trust. Start at verse 2. Start at verse 2. This is David speaking now. Watch this. Listen to what he says. Start at verse 1, actually. Watch this. Second book of Samuel, chapter 22, verse 1. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies. 
mm -hmm. and out of the hand of Saul. Read. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. See that the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Go ahead. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. Mm -hmm. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Go ahead. My high tower. My what? My high tower. High tower against our enemies. The Lord is our high tower against our enemies. Come on. And my refuge. Mm. My savior. Thou savest me from violence. You did that thing. Now jump down to verse 51 now. Come on. Second book of Samuel chapter 22 verse 51. He is the tower of salvation for his king. You did that thing. The, he is the Lord that is the tower of salvation. For his king, who's the king? David at that time. Come on. And showeth mercy to his anointed. Mm. And to David and to his seed forevermore. Who praises to the most? Psalms 18 verse 2. Let's get there. The book of Psalms chapter 18 verse 2. Three. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. You see that David is keep saying the same thing over and over to let us to drive the point home. Psalm 61, verse 3. Let's get that now. Psalm 61 and verse 3. Watch what he says here. The book of Psalms, chapter 61, verse 3. Mm. For thou hast been a shelter for me. And a strong tower from the enemy. You see that thing? Thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The Lord has been that tower for us. Now the Lord is our tower, is our tower of righteousness against our enemies in the lands of our captivities. We need to understand that thing. Psalms 144 verse 2. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 144 verse 2. Read. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, mm. and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, Wait. who subdueth my people under me. Who subdueth my people under me. That's what he's saying right there. Get Jeremiah 6 verse 27. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 verse 27. What? I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, mm -hmm. that thou mayest know and try thee away. See that thing? So what is he? Who is he talking about? Israel. Who is the tower? The Lord is our tower. Understand that. He is our tower and our fortress among the people. That's what we're reading here. That's what he's saying right there. Understand that thing. But watch this. Because Christ said the same thing in a parable form. Get that in Luke 14, verse 28. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28. Mom. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sit in not down first? Which of you, intending to build a tower? What is the tower here? A tower of righteousness. Which of you, intending to build a tower? Okay, go ahead. Sit not down first. Mm and counteth the cost, the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Well, what is he saying? He said, listen, before you intend to build the Tower of Righteousness, you must sit down first. What are you sitting down first to do? Get that in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. This is what you must do first. You understand? 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto God, mm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because you're not going to be ashamed when you study. Because when you don't study, you are going to be put to shame. Why? Because you don't study, you are going to be confounded. That's what he's saying. Read again verse 15. Come on. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. 
Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth, piece up upon piece and line upon line, here a little and there a little. Go back, Luke 14, verse 28. One more again. The book of Luke, the book of Luke. 14, verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counted the cost. You, see that? you must sit down and study to count the cost, to understand the mission that you're about to embark in that is going to be trials. Okay, Sarah, two and one, real quick. You sit down, you study, and these are the things that you will understand when you study. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. Yes. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Thing, you must prepare your soul for temptation. How? You study. Because the temptation will come. So when you sit down and, and sit down first to count the cost, you're sitting down to study and to prepare yourself for temptation and understanding that temptations will come. You understand? Every season of your walk. Go back to Luke 14, verse 28 again. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28. Read. For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost? Whether you have sufficient to finish it? Whether you have sufficient to finish it. Are you going to endure until the end? Get that in Matthew 24, because that's what he's saying. Matthew chapter 24. Okay. Read verse 13. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That he that shall endure unto the end, the same, that same man that endure unto the end, or woman, will be saved in the end. Whether he dies in he or she dies in this truth, or he is still alive when the Lord returns, while in the truth, he is going to be saved. That's what he's saying. Go back, Luke, chapter 14, verse 28, once again. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28. Mm. For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? You cannot start in this truth and just give up along the way. Because what's going to happen? Next verse. Read. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. You see that thing? The people that will begin to mock you is your family members. The people you used to roll with in the world. You understand? The people that you told, listen, I'm no longer doing that. I'm no longer doing that. So now when you come back into the world, you say, no, I was just playing. They're going to mock you. They will accept you, but they will mock you. You understand? They'll ridicule you. Go ahead. Say, this man began to build and was not able to finish. You see that? This man began to build this tower of righteousness and was not able to finish. Why? Because he did not count the cost, whether he had sufficient to finish it. He did not understand that you must endure until the end. He did not understand that you must endure as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He didn't understand that. Okay? So he gave up. So guess what? We're not going to give up, brothers. We must not give in to sin. We must fight. Okay, we must fight. Now, go back. Um, go back to uh, Mark 12, because that's what Christ was saying. He was explaining that. Mark 12, verse 1 again. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 1. Okay. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a head and head about it. And did a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. What he did, he says he let it out to husbandmen. Who's the husbandmen? That's us, the laborers. We are the husbandmen. You understand? The laborers. Get that in Second Kings 25, verse 12. Okay. He let it out, meaning he gave the laborers a job to do, to work in the vineyard. Okay? Second book of Kings, chapter 25, verse 12. Read. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be a vine, 
to prevent Jesus and husbandmen. You see that this is that this is now this is Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. This is Nebuzadan actually. Nebuzadan, captain of the guard. So he says, he left the poor of the land, meaning Israelites, our forefathers, you understand, to be, we left us to be vine dressers and to be husbandmen, to work in the farm and to be vine dressers, to deal with the vineyard, okay? So this goes into what? Husbandmen, which is farmers, which is the laborers, the vineyard, you understand, which is the house of Israel, to be vine dressers, to do what? To build and teach the house of Israel the laws of God. To labor for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Get that in 2 Chronicles 26. Read verse 10. 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 10. Okay. Also, he built towers in the desert. He did many wells. For he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains. This is Uzziah. This is the give this king Uzziah who was ruling during this time in the kingdom of Judah. Read verse 9 so we understand what he's talking about. Verse 9. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate mm. and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified mm. them. Come on. Also, he built towers in the desert and digged many wells. Mm. For he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains. Husbandmen also. You see that? And Husbandmen also, meaning laborers to work in the farms, in the vineyards. You understand? Go ahead. To work the land. Read. And vine dressers in the mountains. You see that? Vine dressers, okay? To work with the what? The vine, to deal with the wine fed. Go ahead. And in Carmel. For he loved husbandry. He loved farming. He loved farming. That's what, that's, what the, that's what the Lord loves, farming. That's why Adam was given land. He was given a job to work the land to take care of it. You understand? So guess what? We also, the, in, in the spirit, we have been given land. And guess what's planted in the land? The vine. You understand? The, the, the fruits of the vine. That's the house of Israel. That's the job, brothers and sisters. That's the job. Understand that. Get Jeremiah 31, verse 24. Well, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 24. Go ahead. And there, and there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all the cities thereof together, husbandmen, mm. and they that go forth with flocks. So the husbandmen will go forth with flocks. He's letting you know. You see what he's telling you? He's telling you that the husbandmen, their job will be to deal with the flocks. So that's what he's telling you what's actually was the vineyard, the house of Israel, that's the flocks. So who's the husbandman? The husbandman in this case represents who? The shepherd. You understand? So that's what he's saying. It's very subtle, but that's what he's saying right there. Okay? Get that in Joel, chapter 1, verse 11. The book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 11. Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen. Mm -hmm. How, O ye vine dressers? You see that thing? You see what the husbandmen are doing? They are vine dressers. They're dealing with the what? The vineyard. Go ahead. For the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest of the field is perished. Because the harvest of the field is perished. Meaning why? The house of Israel is destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it needs what? Husbandmen. It needs husbandry so he can be looked after. So what? The, 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 the branches can come out and the flowers can pop out. They can be pollination. They can be honey. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Because the apostle Paul, he said the same thing here. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Go ahead. For we are laborers together with God. Mm. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. You see that? It says we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. So we work in the vineyard of the Lord of hosts. We are God's building. Okay? That's what he's saying right there. Give me that in 2 Ezra 9, verse 17. 2 
Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 17. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 17. Read. And he answered me, saying, Like as the field is, so is also the seed. You see that thing? The field, because on in the field we plant seed. Go ahead. As the flowers be, such are the colors also. Because the flowers have different types of colors that the Lord has given to give a different type of scent. Go ahead. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. You know, I think the workmen, they do the work. Is This is all metaphor for the work that we as the nation of Israel must do for our nation in the spirit of Christ. Read. And as the husband is himself, mm. so is his husbandry also. So, so as the husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry also. So the same way the husband, the husbandman must be on point, the husbandry also must be after his footsteps. Go ahead. For it was the time of the world. And why? Or when, when all this is being prepared, the time of the Gentiles being ruling is going to be taking place while Israel is waking up. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Get that in Sarah 7 verse 15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 15. Right? Hate not laborous work, neither husbandry. Neither what? Neither husbandry. We don't hate laborers' work because we must labor in the Lord's vineyard. Neither husbandry, meaning the work that a husbandman must do, which is husbandry, to do what? To take care of the vineyard. Go ahead. Which the Most High hath ordained. The Most High is the one that ordained this thing. The Lord loves it. The Lord ordained it. We must do it. Okay. Second Maccabees 12 and 1. Second book of Maccabees chapter 12 is 1. When these covenants were made, Lysias went unto the king, and the Jews were about their husbandry. And the Jews were about their husbandry. It was back then, so it is today. We must be about the, our husbandry, which the Most High God hath ordained. Okay? Now go back. Go back to Mark 12. Read verse 1 again. Of Mark chapter 12, verse 1. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man came to the vineyard and set an hedge about it, and dig a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husband, and went into a far country. Do that thing, he left it into our hands to get this work done. That's what he's saying. This whole parable is about Christ giving us the laws, statutes, and commandments, making God's commandment honorable, dying for the 12 tribes of Israel, and giving us the gospel for us to go and teach while he goes back to the Father to claim his reward, his prize. You understand? He says, and he went into a far country at I didn't all that. He done all that. Okay? Read that in Acts chapter 1, verse 9, when he went to a far country. Of Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Mm. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up by a chariot. He was teleported into the chariot, and guess what? He went back to the Father. Get that in Hebrews. We read this sometimes back. Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. Hebrews 1. Uh, read verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's where he, that's where he went. He went to a far country to sit, to sit down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Mark 12 is two now. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 12 is two. Go ahead. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. See that? He sent to the husbandman a servant. The husbandman, remember, 
They are the ones that are responsible for the vineyards. Go ahead. That he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. Because the husbandmen have been working. They're supposed to be there. They're supposed to have been working because he said what? He says he let it out to the husbandmen and went to, into a far country. He says at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. Hold this. Go back to Matthew 21. Read verse 34 now. The book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 34. Mm. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. You know, the fruits of the vineyard. Because he's saying, when the time of the fruit drew nigh. What is the time of the fruit? The time of harvest. That's the time of the fruit. The time of harvest. That's what he's talking about right there. Read again. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 34. And when right. the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruit of it. That they might what? That they might receive the fruits of it. That they might receive the fruits of it. So now, watch this. Give me that in um, Revelation, okay? The time of the fruits drew my get. You know what? Hmm. Let's explain it like this. Watch this. Hold on a second. It's not part of my notes, but I think I'll use this. Mm. Yeah. Read Leviticus. Okay, give me Leviticus 23. Um, read verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From mm. the day that he brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Because now this is how we count uh, the days when, we, are, when we, we get to the Feast of Pentecost. So that's what this is going into. Read that again, verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 15. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. You see that? Because remember, before that, we were observing the what? The, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After that, we're going to be counting what? Seven Sabbaths will be complete plus one day. The morrow after the Sabbath, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. 49 days plus one day. That's why we already observe it on a Sunday. Why? Because of how we're counting here. Go ahead. Even unto the morrow after the, the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. Mm -hmm. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. What? Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loads of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. They are the what? They are the first fruits of unto the Lord. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Now, remember, these fruits, right? The first fruits, this is the time of harvest now. You understand? So, guess what? Understanding the Feast of Pentecost, we understand is harvest season. You understand? When we are going to harvest the first fruits that we're going to reap from the field. So, likewise, in a spiritual context, that's what the Lord is explaining to us in, in Mark 12. The husbandmen are supposed to work on their husbandry. So that why? When he sent the servant, the servant is supposed to receive the fruits, you understand, that have been reaped from the harvest, from the vineyard, because the husbandmen have been laboring. Okay? Now, watch this. Now, let's get Revelation now. Get Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, let's read verse, read verse 4. The book of Revelation, 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, mm. for they were virgins. Okay. These are they who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. 
to follow Christ wherever or wherever he go. Whatever Christ says, they will do it. Read. These were redeemed from among men. Because they are men. This is the 144. Come on. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And unto the Lamb. I need you to pay attention. Being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. The Lamb. You read him, Bryce. Mess me up. Okay. Watch this. Give me that in First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 15. The Apostle Paul explained this. Thing. First Corinthians 15, verse 23. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 23. Come on. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. At his coming. See that thing? It says Christ the first fruits. Remember, Christ is the first fruits, meaning the first born, the first begotten. And those that are what? Those that are Christ at his coming. Those that follow the Lamb or that's wherever he goeth. You understand? So now, go back. Go back to where he was at. Matthew 21, verse 34. Matthew 21, verse 34. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servant to the husbandman. I think when the time... Whoa, 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 wait. When the time of the first fruit drew near, when the time of harvest drew near, but let me show you how it's written in Mark. Watch this. Hold this. We're coming back. Mark chapter 12. In Mark is a little harder. Watch this. Read Mark 12 verse 2. The book of Mark chapter 12 is 2. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. He says, and at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. At the season, what season is this? Harvest season. That's what he's saying. You see, in Mark, he didn't make it plain like that. He just said, at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant. But go back to Matthew 21, read verse 34 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 34. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. They might receive the fruits of the what? Of the husbandmen. The fruits of the vineyards. Okay? Go back to Mark 12. Read verse 2 again. The book of Mark chapter 12 verse 2. And at the season, he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. Now watch this. Get that in James, okay? Give me James real quick. James chapter 3. Because the apostle James, he explained this thing. James chapter 3 and verse... No, 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 not James 3. No, James 1 verse 18. James 1 verse 18. Watch this. Book of James, chapter 1, is 18. Come on. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. Mm. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That thing it says, of his own will beget he us. Who's the us? Those that follow the lamb with us wherever he goeth. With the word of truth. So he's letting you know who the fruits are. The fruits is us. What are those fruits? The fruits of the spirit is to plant the laws in the minds of the people. Read James chapter 1, verse 18 again. The book of James chapter 1, verse 18. Read. Of his own will, because he asked with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Okay. 